How's it going, you sexy beasts? This past Tuesday was probably the biggest event in all of Battlefield 4 history. The big old patch to make Battlefield 4 version 2.0. This patch, well, let's be serious. It fixed the game. Battlefield 4 is finally out of beta, everyone. Only took them nearly two years. In all seriousness, though, the Los Angeles team of DICE has been hard at work hammering out build after build on the Community Test Environment, or CTE, and this recently fall patch is the culmination of their hard work. The full list of patch notes are in the description below, as there is a massive wall of text to cover. This video isn't going to cover absolutely everything, just the barebone essentials that I find the most game-changing. So let's jump right into it, shall we? First and foremost, as I'm sure you can all tell from the background gameplay, we're on Rush! That's right, it's actually a game type in Battlefield 4, who to thunk it? It may not be as awesome as it was in Bad Company 2, but hey, this patch changed the placements of MCOMs, available vehicles, and even disabling Commander Mode outright on all vanilla Rush maps. Dawnbreaker is still left out of the pool to be changed, but the changes to these maps are an ongoing project. Load up your favorite map on Rush and give it a try. By far, my new favorite map is Heinen Resort on Rush with 48 players and about 250 tickets. The Operation D-Day feel when you take the beach is by far the most battlefield moment I've ever had in Battlefield 4. The main meat of this patch, in my opinion, is the complete removal of visual recoil. Every time you fire your weapon, it recoils in one specific way or another. With visual recoil, the weapon would recoil the way it's supposed to, but also play another animation on top of it to simulate your soldier's reaction to the recoil or something or another. It sounds cool, but for all immersion purposes, but in actuality, it would mean that the crosshair, iron sight, red dot, what have you, will not actually display where the bullets will be going. Now the visual recoil is gone and the sights are stabilized, your crosshair is where your bullets will go when fired. Oh, it's beautiful. Attachments has also been touched up just a tad, such as the muzzle brake's overall impact being reduced and the heavy barrel getting a nice buff to its spread reduction. To top it all off on this badass change, horizontal recoil has actually been reduced across the board. Recoil comes in the forms of vertical and horizontal, which can easily compensate vertical recoil by pulling down your mouse, but horizontal recoil is completely random and cannot be compensated for. This has been toned down, and because of the increased accuracy you'll be seeing, the overall damage of all weapons have been reduced ever so slightly to lengthen the time of kill a bit longer. Now, it will take one extra shot on most guns to kill some people. This change was oriented around preventing those die-behind-wall moments where that one extra bullet worth of health would have saved you, or those one-frame deaths where it looked like you just went from 100 health to zero before you could even react. Personal defense weapons, or PDWs, as well as carbines, have been given bullpup modifiers to give them a slight edge in close quarters combat environments, meaning they're more accurate during hip firing. More specifically, the CBJMS and JS2 have gotten some really awesome buffs to make them more competitive compared to the rest of engineer weaponry. On top of that, bullet velocity for suppressed weapons are being increased. Some weapons would fall below 300 meters per second with the suppressor on, which is absolutely hilarious. So hopefully that won't be happening anymore. I'm sure we've all played on 64 player Operation Bottleneck servers before and just cried ourselves to sleep from sheer explosive spam. To help counteract this, all non-standard grenades are getting nerfed pretty freaking hard. RG overpowered impact grenades now deal 80 damage maximum, and you can only carry one at a time without the extra grenade squad perk. The same goes with the V40 minis. Their carrying capacity was brought down from 3 to 2 total grenades. To add further insult to injury, it now takes about 4 times as long to resupply lethal grenades from ammunition crates dropped by support players. A triage system is finally in the game. It's only been in the works since about three years ago near the end of Battlefield 3's life cycle, but hey, better late than never, right? The triage system allows the assault kit to see remaining time an ally's corpse has to be revived before disappearing and respawning. This allows medics on the field to revive with plenty of information for them to process. On top of just seeing the revive timer, the defibrillators will now play an audible beat to signify that they are fully charged and will revive a player with 100% health. It's a really awesome addition and has made me go to full charge up as soon as possible and as often as possible to get those 100% revives. Before this change, I would just quick revive allies for 20% health and throw down a med bag because I didn't know how long I would have to actually get them up. This change is just, well, it's amazing to say the least. It seems like a little tiny change, the whole triage system and all, but it really changed up my playstyle with the assault 
and I'm also getting a lot more points for it. This next aspect of the patch is another quality of life addition. The entire heads-up display has become radically customizable, ranging from opacity of different HUD elements to sizing, as well as displays over distance. It's a really awesome implementation, and one that I never quite realized I wanted so badly until I got my hands on it. To easily set up a HUD to your liking, I recommend loading up the test range, hitting escape, going to options, gameplay, and then click advanced options. From here, you can change, well, just about anything you want. There are a few subcategories I want to point out, so let's just go ahead and go down the list. The minimap subcategory displays everything that has to do with the minimap. Oh, big surprise. I personally always run with my minimap zoomed in as far as it can go at 50 meters, which was an annoyance in the past having to toggle the three different zooms to get what I want. Now I can set it to default to 50 meters due to the default scaling selection. Bad ass. I've set the icons themselves to be slightly smaller so I can more easily pinpoint where players or med boxes are, while also making the minimap itself slightly translucent in the slight event there might be an enemy hiding behind it. Common HUD world icons is one of my favorite to play around with. Previously, whenever I would aim down sights and attempt to fight an enemy, more often than not, the big ass objective icons would obscure their silhouettes and I would quickly lose track of them in a firefight. Now whenever I aim down sights, objectives become near invisible, player names and bars become translucent, and enemy Doritos, names, or health bars are the most apparent. This has helped me out tremendously, and I can easily tell my game has improved with this aspect of the patch alone. Enemy HUD world icons and friend HUD world icons work very similarly, but one is obviously for enemies, while the other one is for friendlies. Who'd have thunk it? I'd just suggest finding an MP server and joining with a friend, using the test range, or just going at it full blown on a 64 player Conquest large server to test around with all the sliders. If you haven't done so already, make sure you readjust your field of view. The old field of view was calculating improperly as Battlefield 4 actually uses vertical field of view but was displaying horizontal field of view. It's just a discrepancy that was alleviated and requires you to readjust your field of view. So if you used 110 degree FOV before the patch, make sure you set your FOV view until the number in the brackets displays about 110. So whatever you used last patch, just set in the brackets what you want now. Lastly, a new feature called Uniform Soldier Aiming has been put into the game. This is essentially a calculator in-game that registers and sets sensitivity to be uniform across all control platforms in the game. For example, you have your soldier's mount sensitivity set to 25%. That may be fine for tracking targets with a red dot, but you may pick up a sniper rifle and may be way too slow for you. Or vice versa, you have your sensitivity set to 75%, which is great for snapping to targets or quickly rotating your soldier with irons or red dot, but when you slap on a 40 times scope, you can't control the damn thing. With the Unifor Soldier aiming, you can set up particular sensitivities you want to keep, and Battlefield will adjust that sensitivity for whatever you're doing. If you're shooting some dude while using iron sights, then grab a battle pickup sniper rifle with a 40 times scope, you might have a bad time. With uniform soldier aiming, your sensitivity will be adjusted between the two to make them feel very similar in regards to total degrees of movement you incur while moving your mouse. So there you have it, you sexy beast. The fall patch for Battlefield 4, which is released on September 30th, 2014. What are your favorite parts of the patch? Let me know in the comment section below. My personal favorite additions are obviously the stabilized sights and the ability to completely customize your heads-up display. It has been just amazing. And thank you all so very much for watching, and if you like this video, please give it a big ass thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs it down and let me know what I can improve upon. And would you want to see more videos like these? Then go ahead and subscribe. It's absolutely free.